um, in just a bit. Oh, sorry, got out of there. I'm trying to turn off my camera for a second. Let's see, there we go. Ah. Okay. Looks like we've got two classes and a, a bunch of individuals, so I think we're ready to rock whenever you are. All right, sounds good. Thanks. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, my name is Alexis. I'm here with my coworker Cooper. We're with College Depot at the Phoenix Public Library. Um, college Depot is a free college access center for students. Um, we provide one on one advising services um, completely free at the Phoenix Public Library. Um, and you can schedule an appointment to talk to an advisor about college planning, um, fat financial aid questions, um, GD questions. Uh, and any uh, academic questions you might have, have advisors available. So let's get started. Today we're presenting on asking for letters of recommendation. Um, we focus on academic letters of recommendation, but this could be apl applied to um, letters of recommendation used for uh, job applications as well. All right, so today's topic is letters of recommendation. What do you need them for? What purpose do they serve? Before you ask, what to, know, what to ask, when to ask, and helpful handouts. What do you need letters of recommendation for? College applications. Highly selective colleges will ask you for a letter of recommendation sometimes. Um, many schools on the Common App will let, ask you for a letter of recommendation. Um, scholarships. Highly selective um, scholarships will ask for a letter of recommendation. Um, they'll usually ask for two to three letters um, from different recommenders. Uh, some will provide a form to be filled out by your recommender or yourself, um, your recommender. Um, others will ask recommenders to send letters directly. Um, a lot of the times when they're asking for a letter of recommendation, they'll have you put the email of your recommender and they'll send an email directly to your recommender um, asking for that letter of recommendation. What is the purpose of a letter of recommendation? Um, it's meant to represent your qualifications and goals, um, paint a picture of your unique experiences, uh, provide evidence of your intellectual and creative achievements, uh, add an additional perspective to your applications, and put your academic record into the context of your obstacles and opportunities. Um, so in short, it's meant to paint a better picture of you as a person um, and show the ways that you are unique and an individual um, and contrast your um, achievements to those of your peers. So that's really what you want to uh, get from your letters of recommendation. And you can get that by asking um, unique recommenders, um, giving them unique information. And so that's what we'll be talking about today. So before you ask, there are a couple things that you can do to prepare to um, ask your recommenders for a letter of recommendation. Uh, the first is a request form or a self assessment. Um, We've linked a uh, Phoenix Union's request form and brag sheet um, that is available on the Phoenix Union site. Um, and when you fill one of these out, they'll usually ask you questions about yourself. Um, and this helps give your recommenders context, information, and details about your achievements, goals, and background. And it also takes some of the stress off of you. Instead of having to uh, write up everything that is great about you and give it to your recommender. If that's not something you feel comfortable doing, if maybe um, it's it seems a little too much, it's easier if you have something that's asking you for the same information and it takes the weight off your shoulders. Um, another thing to have uh, prepared to give to your recommenders is a list of colleges or scholarships which require letters and application deadlines. So if you're uh, needing the letter of recommendation for something um, specific, if the timeline's coming up, 
if the deadline's coming up, um, make sure you mention that um, in your when you're asking your recommender. Um, give your recommender any required forms, um, as well as a resume, transcript, and personal statement as it applies. Who to ask? Um, a, a good recommender would be someone who has worked closely with you, someone who appreciates you and your work, um, school counselors or advisors, any mentors, uh, teachers, uh, principal or administration, leaders of organizations where you have volunteered, coaches or employers are all examples of different recommenders, but we encourage you to ask a recommender uh, to highlight different attributes. So a coach to highlight leadership, um, a science teacher to highlight work ethic and ability, um, getting a well Not that many, so about, about 10. I don't know if we can. Oh. <laughs> um, and so asking different people and uh, asking people who know you well um, who are, or who have worked with you. Um, if you're going to be asking people that maybe don't know you as well, be prepared to meet with them separately and meet with them more often. Um, sometimes recommenders would prefer to get a better picture of you as a person. Um, and if they don't know you very well, um, Sometimes they would like to get to meet you more um, and get to talk to you more. So be prepared to ask several people for a letter of recommendation, but really ask people who you feel comfortable with, who you know um, are able to take on the workload of a letter of recommendation. Um, writing a letter of recommendation can be stressful. Uh, so make sure that you're keeping that in mind when you're asking someone. Um, a lot of the times uh, certain people such as counselors or advisors or teachers um, might have a lot of letters of recommendation lined up. Um, and that's not a bad thing. It's just something to keep in mind when you're asking them. So make sure you ask them ahead of time and you're giving them lots of time to work on it and giving them lots of information to work off of. Um, and just keep in mind that sometimes you might be denied a letter of recommendation. Um, someone might just not feel comfortable doing it, might have too much on their plate and don't take it personally. Um, just keep asking and you can definitely collect a, a good uh, well-rounded group of people to get recommendations from. Uh, when to ask for your letter of recommendation. So we recommend that you ask at least a month before you need it. Um, give your recommender plenty of time to work on it. Um, but really ask as soon as possible, especially if it's someone that you feel comfortable and you know that you'd want a letter of recommendation from. Um, just ask for one for the future, just a more general one. Um, when you're asking, be polite and formal. Uh, you can ask uh, via email or in person, but either way, try to express gratitude for the help that they're giving you. Um, allow time for a follow up. Uh, check in with the person you told you asked uh, two to three days before that letter of recommendation is due. Ask. I would check in with them a little earlier than that, maybe about a week before it's due, um, just to make sure that they you know, haven't forgotten, maybe they have a lot on their plate, that they're um, going to be able to make that deadline. Um, and so just check in with them and see if they need anything, anything that can make it easier for them. All right, and then why do you need a letter of recommendation? Uh, survey reports that this is one of the most important components of the application. It um, offers application reviewers a more complete picture of your character, achievements, and goals. Um, and according to College Board, the students that can be helped most by a compelling recommendation are merit scholarship candidates, borderline admissible candidates, uh, um, and competitive candidates at selective colleges. So really, um, letters of recommendation can be the one thing that'll push it, push your application over the edge. And you'll be needing them for more than just college. You'll need them for job applications, um, you know, scholarship applications, things in the future. Um, so it's great practice to, to start asking for them now. All right, well, I think Cooper is the next one. So stop sharing my screen and take over here. Thank you so much, Alexis. Yeah, it does. that was awesome. Uh, everyone, kind of while we're switching over from Alexis to, uh, to my part of the PowerPoint, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat. 
I saw a couple about um, posting the links. Um, we can definitely try and do that in the chat as we go. Um, but we'll also be sure to share this presentation with you so that you have access to those links afterwards as well. As we're switching uh, forward, does anyone have any questions? All right. Well, fantastic. Uh, well, yeah, hopefully we'll also have time for questions at the end as well. Um, so, but as we're going, if you have anything, please feel free to type it in the chat um, and we'll be sure to address any questions that come up. Um, but yeah, so to get started with my part of the presentation, um, let's talk a little bit about what makes a really good recommendation letter. What are college admissions officers looking for? What are scholarship application um, reviewers looking for in a recommendation letter and something that we really recommend kind of as you're working on these letters and asking people is asking people like Alexis said that know you on a personal level um, the people reviewing all of these applications are going to read a lot of letters and so we really believe at College Depot that what makes you stand out the most about yourself is you uh, and so if your letters reflect you on a personal level, um, that will really help your application stand out um, and be really unique. So a couple of different things uh, that go into making a great recommendation letter. Um, strength of character. So if the letter talks about kind of the things that you do, your values, um, kind of on an everyday basis, what kind of person are you? That can really help stand out. Something else really good letters talk about a lot is leadership. Um, college applications and scholarships are looking for students who take initiative uh, and really show that initiative, whether that's in the classroom or in extracurricular activities, athletics, community service. So if you want to find someone who can write a letter that speaks to a leadership role that you play, we find that can really help your application too. Uh, something else uh, that um, they look for is creativity. So this not only applies to something like the arts, or performing arts, music, for example, but it also applies to creativity in the classroom. Are you the kind of student who bring or thinks outside of the box on a problem or on a group project? Um, creativity really extends to whatever type of field you're interested in, whatever type of major. Um, and finding someone who can write about your personal creativity really, again, helps that the applications. And then also uh, really great letters will talk about kind of looking forward your future success. So we really recommend finding someone who maybe has seen you grow and develop over time. Uh, maybe uh, that could be over your high school career kind of starting and then transforming. Uh, into a different kind of person uh, or it could be someone who maybe has worked with you for a long time again a coach who's seen you really grow um, someone like that because if they've been able to see you grow and develop up until this point they can then talk about how you're going to continue to develop going forward um, and again that really stands out to applications um, so kind of the general idea here is to Ask someone who can write very specifically about you and your experiences, uh, what you've done and what you want to do. That specificity really, again, helps you stand out um, and helps the strength of your application going forward. So um, kind of along those lines, a couple of just other tips uh, as you're kind of getting ready for this process. Maybe you've talked to a couple of people. Um, Kind of going back to being really respectful of the person writing the letter for you. Um, obviously, it takes time and effort to write these kind of letters, especially the good ones. And so being appreciative and really showing that appreciation throughout the whole process um, really kind of just shows your your appreciation for the recommender taking the time to do so. Uh, kind of along those lines, one of the best ways to show that appreciation 
is to provide really clear instructions and deadlines. So it really falls on you as the student. It's your responsibility to make sure that you're reading the application instructions, understanding what the requirements are, understanding when things are due. And the more, again, specific that you can be with those things, you can then communicate that clearly to the person you're asking uh, and make it easy for them so that they understand not only what's required, but when you need it by. Uh, something else that we recommend, um, because often, again, this will be kind of a personal connection that you're forming with your recommender, is maybe telling them why you chose them specifically. Um, again, it, it is an investment for the recommender to write this letter, um, and hopefully you're choosing them for a specific reason. Um, we find that recommenders appreciate kind of hearing about why they were chosen. Um, something else we recommend, uh, again, to kind of, as part of the information that you give your recommender, Alexis kind of mentioned earlier, using a recommendation template, a letter of recommendation template. Um, so some kind of, whether it's a form that the application has given you, or just maybe an example, some applications will provide examples of what they want the letter to look like. Um, anything like that can help your recommender as kind of a guideline when they're writing theirs. Uh, and then to kind of to wrap up this point, again, hopefully your recommenders will be pretty invested uh, in you and in your journey. Um, so we recommend uh, providing them with updates. They want to hear about your successes and about um, everything that you're working on and going through. Um, kind of a, maybe kind of a dying art, uh, but we also really recommend writing a thank you note. Um, again, just to express that appreciation, that gratitude for them helping you and for taking the time to do so. Um, so yeah, so a couple, a couple of different tips there. Um, so we know um, that we have a couple of classes uh, in the presentation today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, but we also understand it can be a little hard to ask individual questions in that setup. So we wanted to talk about some of the most frequently asked questions that we encounter, and hopefully you'll find this information helpful too. Um, so one of the one of the questions that we get a lot of is, what if I don't know my teachers well? Maybe you go to a big school, maybe the classes are pretty big in size, and there's not really a lot of one-on-one -on -one time to, to talk to your teachers to get to know them on that personal level that we've been talking about. One thing that we recommend is kind of reaching out to your teachers and being really open with them. Teachers will under, most teachers I think will understand the process of the letters of recommendation and the whole application process. And so we recommend just kind of reaching out and explaining your situation, uh, saying that you need these letters and kind of asking maybe if you could meet one on one with them so that you could get to know them better and they could get to know you a little bit better. And that way the letter of recommendation doesn't feel like it's just them writing a letter kind of in the void. It kind of makes it more of a teamwork process uh, so that they don't feel alone in writing the letter. Another question that we get a lot is, what if I ask someone early and they forget? So let's say you're super on top of your applications, you've got everything organized, you ask people to write the letters super early, um, you're ahead of the deadline, everything's going great. The fact is that recommenders usually have a lot going on, uh, whether it's other letters that they're writing or just their, their jobs, life, um, and so, we believe that most recommenders will appreciate an appropriate amount of check-ins or reminders that are polite and to the point. So let's say maybe you asked kind of like we recommended a month before the letter is due. Um, maybe you let a week or two go by and then you send a follow-up email and say, hey, just wanted to check in and see if you had any questions or if you need any more information about the letter. It's kind of a check-in email, that kind of thing. And then as the deadline approaches, maybe and maybe if you haven't heard much, sending an email or talking to them in person and just kind of reminding them gently about the deadline and again, seeing if they need any information or have any questions. Uh, another question that we get a lot of is, how many letters do I need and what do they specifically need to say? 
So this goes back to that point I brought up earlier about it is your responsibility as the student, as the applicant, to really take the time to read through the application instructions and requirements and understand what the application is asking for. Again, whether that's they're asking for a specific form, whether they're asking for a specific amount of letters, or if they want the letters to talk about something very specifically, that it's on you to understand that and then to communicate that clearly to your recommenders. Um, so taking the time to do so, most applications will have some kind of website. They'll often have a frequently asked questions section where you can find out more information. If you still have questions, most applications will also have a contact person that you can email or call and find out more information. So that's what we'd recommend in that scenario. Um, cool, and I think I'll keep going for the moment, but again, if you have questions, please feel free to type them in the chat um, and we'd be happy to address them. Um, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of time at the end as well. So next up, uh, we just wanted to share some handouts, um, some resources with you. Um, and these are College Depot ones. We'll also be showing you some of the Phoenix Union ones. And we'll also provide links so that you can find these on our website and on Phoenix Union's website. So um, these are three different handouts that we have on our resources website. You can see on the left there is a letter of recommendation request form. Um, so this is something that you fill out and give to your recommender, kind of gives the basic information, when things are required, if there's any specific criteria or requirements, and again, just kind of giving your recommender as much information as possible so that it's easier for them. In the center, you'll see our self-assessment. And this is also something that we recommend giving to your recommender. It kind of asks you to, to write and answer questions about yourself, talk about what you've done, what you're interested in, what you want to do, um, anything that kind of makes you unique. Uh, and again, giving that information to your recommender will often help them write a more specific letter for you. Um, also kind of wanted to point out that filling out this self-assessment helps you as well um, because often this is the kind of stuff that personal statements or essays will ask about. Um, so this can actually kind of be an outline for yourself in that scenario as well. Uh, and then on the right, we have a handout, Getting Strong Letters of Recommendation. Um, this is actually a lot of what we are covering today, uh, but if you prefer it in kind of a PDF form, so you can kind of see it like that, we have that on our website as well. So then let's switch over to Phoenix Union handouts. Um, so these can be found on Phoenix Union's website. There's a whole section, I think it's called Planning for Your Future. Really recommend checking that out. Um, and I believe we put the uh, link in the chat earlier. On the left, you can see uh, Phoenix Union's brag sheet. This is very similar to our self-assessment. And this is something where you talk about yourself, what you've, what you've done, what you wanna do gives the recommender a lot of information about you. It hopefully helps them again write a more specific letter. On the right, you can see the PXU recommendation request form. Again, very similar to ours. Um, keeping things organized, giving those deadlines, and any kind of specific requirements that the application is asking for. So along with these handouts, I uh, just kind of wanted to shout out a couple of, of different resources for you. Um, today we've been talking a lot about scholarships. Um, we actually have a scholarship page on our website. You can see it on the right there. Um, and what's nice about the scholarship page um, for us is uh, you, can, you might be able to see, you can look for scholarships based on different criteria. So for example, if you're interested in STEM or if you're interested in performing arts, you can look up by that major and find scholarships that are specific to that, which is pretty cool. Um, we also have on our resources page on the bottom right, you can see there, we have the handouts that we just discussed, letter of recommendation request form, student self-assessment, and the getting strong letters of recommendation. So our resources page, definitely a great place to go for that. On our resources page, we also have something called the College Admissions Details Chart. And this is essentially a spreadsheet where you can keep track of different applications uh, to college and what they're asking for, 
different deadlines. So it's kind of just a way to stay organized. I believe we have it as a PDF or as a Google spreadsheet. Um, so whatever way you prefer. And actually, it's actually very easy to switch it over to scholarships because often they'll have the same kind of columns. Uh, you just put scholarships instead of colleges once you're at that point. But yeah, we recommend staying organized. Obviously, there can be a lot of going on and the more organized you are, the easier it is to take it one step at a time. Um, but yeah, I think other than that, uh, this is our contact information. Burton Bar Central Library in downtown Phoenix. You can see our phone number there as well as our email. If you or someone you know would be interested in kind of setting up a one on one appointment with one of our advisors, whether it's talk about letters of recommendation or different parts of the college admissions process, financial aid, uh, we have a link there where you can request one of those appointments. And then there's also a link to our website uh, where you can find the scholarships page that we just discussed and also the resources page. So we definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that was definitely a lot of information. Um, let's take a moment and see, uh, does anyone have any questions or anything that they'd like to talk about in more detail? That was really awesome. Great information. I appreciate you guys being here. We have about three or four minutes left of um, their advisory period. So uh, teachers, if you have any questions on behalf of your group or students, if you have any questions, you can take off your uh, mute and, and uh, ask a question or type it in the chat. Otherwise, thanks so much for being here today. We appreciate your participation. Of course. Of course. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> uh, We're synced up. I like it. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll also be sure to um, share the presentation with y'all so you, you have access to those links as well. Thank you, Mr. Pouncey. Thank you all so much. I hope the information was helpful. Yeah, thank you for coming. Um, we will see some of you all next week um, for our next presentation, but I'm glad this was helpful. Um, thank you so much for all your help, Ms. McKee. Um, My pleasure. We appreciated having you here. Yay. Well, we'll <laughs> Doing it again throughout the rest of the year, I'm sure. You guys are an awesome partner for us, for our school. Yeah, definitely. Sounds great. That sounds great. Well, we can probably just close on out. We'll help these guys get off, and we'll see you next time. Sounds good. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you all. I guess we will head out. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your Thursday. You as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care.